Hello boys and girls, um, in this video we are going to talk about both math and your reading assignment for today. So um, for math you're on page 546 and we've gotten into the topic review. So I'm going to read you each one of these questions and you can fill them in as we go. Please pause them after I read each question so that you're not rushing through. Alright, so it looks like this. The page is purple. Okay. 546 vocabulary review. Number one, <clears throat> circle the unit that has the greatest length. Foot, meter, inch. Choose one. Number two, circle the unit that has the shortest length. Yard, inch, centimeter. Choose one. Number three, cross out the unit you would not use to measure the length of a book, inch, centimeter, yard. You're going to cross it out, the one that you would not use. Number four, cross out the unit you would not use to measure the height of a house, inch, foot, meter. Okay, now for each of these, you want to estimate the length of each item, okay? <clears throat> so you've measured each of these things at some point during this unit, and then you can try to remember back and think about how long it would probably be. So a pencil, you're estimating, not measuring exactly. You're writing down what it, you think it would be. A paper clip. And then instead of a school desk, use the table you're working on. Okay, now it says use words to tell you, or excuse me, use words to tell how to find the height of a table. Use terms from the word list. All right, so tell me, how would you find the height of the table that you're working at? And you want to use these math terms up here, not all of them, but pick a few of them to give me that in a sentence. How would you do it? As though you were telling a first grader, how do they measure the height of a table? You tell them using math terms. Okay, guys, that's it for math today. So now let's look at... 26.2. Now note that that says grammar assessment at the top, and assessment means like a test, okay? So you have to try to do this on your own, and you have to do your very best work on it. So write the following correctly. You remember we worked on using abbreviations like doctor and missus and where the period goes way back when we were still in school together. Um, and you know how to write the date, and you know how to write proper nouns, like in an address down below. All right? So pause it now while you fill in all of that correctly with capitals and periods where you need them. You might need a comma for the date as well. Okay. All right, so at the end of each of those as well, there's numbers. Those are telling you how many things you have to fix up, okay? Now, write the word that means more than one. So we'll do the first one together. If you have one mouse, then you have two mice. Right? Mice is the word that you use when you have more than one. So write down the plural form, the more than one, for each one of those. Go ahead and pause while you're finishing that up. Okay. Now, it says circle the nouns and draw an arrow from the adjective to the noun and draw a wiggly line under the verb in each sentence. Okay. That's a few different steps. So, let's look at the one they did. The famous writer talked, all right? So the first thing you wanna do is circle the noun. So right now, go through 
11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 and circle the nouns. Do that now. Pause it. Now, I want you to go through and find the word that describes the noun. Usually that will come before the noun and draw the arrow from the adjective, that's the describing word, to the noun, just like they did up above. The, what do we know about the writer? He was famous. So they drew an arrow from famous to writer. Okay, so go ahead now and draw your arrows from the describing word or adjective to the noun that you already circled. Okay, that's showing what the adjective is describing. It's describing your noun. All right, pause while you're finishing that up. And then finally, what did the noun do? Go through each one of those sentences and draw a squiggly line under each verb that tells what the noun did. Okay, go ahead through and do that now. So a little complicated to begin with, but if you break it down in the steps, not so bad. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look at subjects and predicates down below. Draw one line under the subject and two lines under the predicate. Okay, so the subject is the naming part. That's the who. Sometimes, remember, you'll have a compound subject. So it could say... Um, instead of Mrs. Miller went to the store, Mrs. Miller is the subject there. It could say Mrs. Miller and Eli went to the store, in which case you would put one line under Mrs. Miller and Eli. That's a compound subject. Sometimes it can be a compound predicate, like Mrs. Miller went to the store and then the bank. Okay, so that's two in the predicate. That's compound. So you would put two lines under the predicate. One line under the who, two lines under the what, okay? Sub, the naming part and the telling part. Who did it? What did they do? Okay, so go ahead through each one of those and put one line under the subject in each of those sentences. You may have more than one subject. It may be a compound subject. You'd put one line under both. Who are they talking about? The naming part gets one line. Pause while you're doing that. Now the next part is your telling part, and that gets two lines under it. So go through each one of those sentences and put two lines under what the subject did. Okay? The whole part. All right, just like they did in the example, yours should look like that. And I'll tell you this, the subject in these cases is always in the beginning and the predicate is always at the end. So that's real easy to go through and find, okay? All right, guys, I hope you worked hard on both your math and your reading lesson for today. You can do some extra math or reading on IXL or in kids A to Z or just a fun book at home today. Otherwise, you've already gotten a lot of the day's work done.